Hello, and welcome to another exciting edition of On the Hill. I'm your host, Mary Lee Gallagher, here with my co-host, David Negron. For the third year in a row, Chestnut Hill College hosted the Philadelphia Brotherly Love Cup. Over 13 colleges and over 3,000 spectators came out for a fun day of Quidditch on the hill. Before the event, our own Shannon McFadden spoke to one of the players. Hi, I'm Shannon McFadden here with Aaron Simpson, one of Chestnut Hill's Quidditch players. Let's go! So Aaron, how did you get involved in Quidditch? Well, I came here my freshman year. I played basketball, uh, football, ran some track. And I figured I'd try something new, and Quidditch was that something new. What position do you play? I play a chaser. Uh, what that is, we use the quaffle. Uh, we're the position that scores. And what other positions are there? Uh, there's beaters, uh, keepers, and seekers. The beaters, they use the bludger. They uh, knock out the other members of the team. Um, the seeker chases the snitch. And the keeper is pretty much the goalie. What does your team do differently this year than they did last year to improve as a team? Uh, this year we have more organized practice. We work a lot harder. Every now and then we pick it to the gym. We have actual leadership this year. Uh, just the overall morale of the team is a lot better. And what are you expecting out of the season? I'm expecting wins, victory, a trophy, maybe a ring. I don't think they give rings though. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks, Shannon. Our next segment focuses on politics and the upcoming election. Here's Mayor with the story. This year's presidential election has candidates Obama and Romney neck and neck. The general consensus is that Romney won the first debate by displaying his command of economics and using his business acumen. After the debate, those on Obama's side openly questioned if Obama was prepared or even motiv motivated for the debate to win the election. Romney and Biden won their respective debates by being aggressive and Obama and Ryan, respectively, were forced to defend their records. The latest Real Clear Politics poll has Romney and Obama in a virtual tie. The Rasmussen Daily Tracking Poll has Romney leading 40% to Obama's 48%, while amongst likely voters, Romney is leading 49% to Obama's 47%. As elections are coming close, students have been viewing each candidate and their viewpoints on numerous subjects that they will encounter. We spoke to students on campus and asked them questions on how this upcoming election will impact their education. You're getting like different perspectives on what's going on and people seem like they're really getting into this like election so far, but some people seem like they don't know what they want to do because you're hearing one thing, but then you're hearing the other thing. It's not like, who are you getting the true story or not? I've watched a few of the debates and I'm just completely unimpressed with both candidates actually at this point. Um, I feel like Mitt Romney has, a tr has trouble answering any questions. He kind of just goes off on tangents, which I mean is normal in politics, but it's really bad. Like actually giving answers to people's questions seems to be a serious issue for him. And Obama just kind of keeps talking in circles. So not really sure where I stand right now. More so with Obama, but I'm not really impressed with either of them. Education plays a major role within our society. It gives the people the opportunity to further advance their knowledge on topics that inspires them. A student has the option to choose their path and play a role in shaping their future. Well, I think that education is important because it helps further develop ourselves as a community to flourish and have the ability to start a new career. People who attend school generally start with a decent salary rather than people who um, just go straight into work out of high school. So I think that's pretty important that, you know, school, having an educational background along with um, experience gives you a better chance to, to land a decent job. Um, so hopefully if um, people go out and vote for the, the presidential candidate that's well suited, that we should have um, uh, better chances of receiving better benefits for education. Back to Mary Lee and David in the newsroom. Thanks, Mayor. For our final segment, we turn to our feature reporter, Alex Azar, who has the pulse of what is going on around campus. Looking for something to be a part of? Everyone is something that makes them tick. It's something that makes us feel fulfilled and self-actualized at the end of the day. What's yours? If you can't answer, that's okay. 
Our reporters went to the Fall Fest and explored all the ways to get involved here at CHC through on-campus clubs and organizations. Hi, I'm Allie. I'm Taylor. And we're the co-presidents of CHAT, Chestnut Hill Activities team. And today we hosted Fall Fest. So CHAT is just an event planning activity club kind of thing on campus. Um, we do just a lot of different events like concerts, um, trips, cupcake decorating night, pie day, just tons of different stuff on, on campus. Um, in Fall Fest, we wanted to make it a lot bigger this year and we also decided to include other clubs so more people could get involved and we can get more people out here. Um, and so far it's been really successful. We had a really good turnout. Hi, I'm Sophia, I'm a co-leader of Feel Good. Basically, we make grilled cheese sandwiches to help end world hunger. Um, we're at Fall Fest right now, we're making grilled cheese sandwiches. I'm president of the Commuter Club and we're participating in Fall Fest to raise some money to help decorate our lounge. Uh, my club is doing a ring toss game and when you get a ring around a bottle of soda you get to keep it. Hello, I'm Gabe Henninger. And I'm Alyssa Cherawati. I am the president of Mask and Foil. I am the president of the Association of Performing Arts, commonly known as APA. And today we're here to, at uh, Fall Fest doing the open mic event. As the two performing related clubs on campus, we decided to join forces and have an open mic at the Fall Fest, which is hosted by Chat on the Summer House Lawn. It's, uh, it's a good time. Two times the fun right here. Parents Weekend has just passed. It was the perfect opportunity to strut your Griffin pride and show your parents what Chestnut Hill is all about. For a deeper look into the event, here are our Chestnut Hill reporters. Chestnut Hill College's Family Weekend gives students and their families an opportunity to experience the campus with a list of fun-filled activities. Family Weekend is nice. It's like a place where everyone can get together and just casually like, talk around and stuff like that. So it's not too bad. It's a lot of fun. We like the golf course, but we do miss the Cupcake Lady. I can tell you right yeah. now. Without, without the Cupcake Lady, I shouldn't have even came here. Families participate in various events with the main activities happening on Saturday. What's your favorite activity so far? Uh, I like making the flowers. He came for the cupcake lady and she's not here. Very disappointing on that end. But other than that, it looks like a fun day and the weather is beautiful. From a campus picnic to a student parent basketball game, this weekend is sure to be exciting. Looking to explore the culture of Chestnut Hill? Why not sneak a peek at our upcoming play? Our CHC reporters recently dove head first into the lights, glitz, and glamour of CHC's theater department. What's that smell? Could it be the smell of Larry's favorite chocolate cake? The name of the show is Larry's Favorite Chocolate Cake. It's weird because you know how you're not supposed to like judge a book by its cover? Well, like we saw the cover for this book before we saw anything. It's just a, it's a guy swinging off of the letters of his own name. So it, it's weird. And it, it, it was just kind of like, we did judge it. We judged it as interesting because why would you present it that way? And then, and then when we got into it, it's a show that nobody's ever heard of but is uh, hilariously funny and very interesting. It's a comedy about um, this guy who goes through his midlife crisis and moves home with his parents. And it was a really funny show, but it also had like a deeper meaning that I think a lot of people in the audience will be able to relate to. A middle-aged man is uh, pretty much going through his midlife crisis and decides that the only way to cope is to move back in with his parents. So he leaves his family, he comes to move back in with his parents who are about to leave for this big around the world trip. And so when he gets there, they want to help him, but they can't. And it's basically, uh, it takes place over uh, two days, I think. And it's a scramble to uh, try to get his life back together. And, and you find out that every other character kind of needs to get their life back together too. And it's. It's, it's kind of a, it's a weird because it's like a coming of age tale, but he's definitely already uh, come of age. The show is November 16th, 17th, and 18th, and you all should come see it because it's going to be fabulous. That's it for this week. Make sure to join us next time for more excitement on the hill. Stop! <laughs>
Gangnam Style. Gangnam Style.